Des of Peg and Des. Peg is on travel this week and I'm holding down the fort. Before we get started on our review of Mistresses, don't forget, subscribe to this channel, follow us on Twitter, at Peg and Des, and make sure to check out our other videos. And like this video. You can like it right now because I know you'll love it. So let's talk about mistresses. We are winding up the season and things are starting to get a little frisky. Let's talk about Joss and the Bed Bath & Beyond lesbian. So Joss and the Bed Bath & Beyond lesbian have a conversation about Joss and men and sex. BBB says to Joss, I don't mind if you have sex with men. I mean, she may not have said it exactly that way, but she pretty much told Joss, I understand your need to be with a man, and she made it seem like she'd be understanding if Joss made the decision to do so. Anybody in their right mind who's in a relationship with someone who loves sex, who likes having sex with different people, would not tell that person that unless they wanted them to go do it. BBB, you really set yourself up. And then we see Joss actually go and have sex with her boss, Olivier, after uh, doing an open house for some clients. I am not annoyed with Joss about her having sex with anyone. I'm annoyed with her, though, for having sex with her boss. Up until the last two episodes, her boss was not checking for her. Matter of fact, he was actually very nasty to her discounting her, not talking to her in a kind manner, acting like she was stupid. I just didn't get it. And then all of a sudden, there's just all this sexual chemistry in the air. I would have wanted to know from Olivier what changed. From the time I came in this door, you were rude nation. Was that kind of playful banter? It didn't feel like sexual tension to me. It just felt like tension. I'm very much of the Mike Jones mindset. Back then, you didn't want me. Now I'm hot, you're all on me and I don't want you anymore. That's just how it goes. You either want me when I want you, or we don't want each other. That's very selfish, immature, and it's probably why I'm alone, but that's not the point. So we'll see what happens with Joss and BBB next week. I don't know if this relationship is going to sustain itself because BBB acted like she was really upset. Let's talk about Harry, Dom, and Sam. Savvy admits that she has feelings for Dom, which we've known all along. She says that she may want to explore that relationship. Dom is giving me love. Dom is putting me up in nice hotels and thinking about my feelings and getting me a prenatal massage and helping me buy baby cribs and groceries. Maybe I need to give this great American Negro a chance. I agree, Savvy. I agree. Follow your heart. Run with Dom. We also see Harry go down to the clinic, for lack of a better word, uh, to find out about the results of the paternity test. He goes inside, the woman at the front desk pulls the results up on the computer and tells Harry that she's not allowed to release the results to him because he's not listed among the individuals on the form who can be told the results. Harry walks away. What would have kept me from hopping over that table? Not a thing in this world. There was no security around. That lady would have been so surprised she would not have known what to do. I would have hopped over that table and taken a quick look at that computer screen. I don't see how Harry can take it. How do you not know if your wife is carrying your child? And walk out of the building. I couldn't have left without my results. Could not have left. I'm still excited to see whose child this is and I'm hoping that we'll find out next episode. I really hope that they don't make this like a season two cliffhanger because frankly, I don't know if there will be a season two. Maybe that's been announced or not, but I'm hoping that they wrap this up next episode. April had a lot going on this week. So Richard tells April that he thinks it's a good idea, a good idea to have Dondre Whitfield back into April's daughter's life. And Richard does bring up a good point. If the daughter finds out that Dondre has been alive all her life and she has not been able to have a relationship with Dondre, she's going to blame April and that will ruin April and the daughter in great relationship as they are now. So Richard does bring some sage advice to the table. I'm just wondering how April is going to articulate to her daughter that the person they thought was dead is now back and his name is not Lazarus. We'll, we'll see. But the thing is, is as April went to the school to pick up her daughter to go have this conversation, daughter is missing in action. 
I'm really hoping that Dondre Whitfield doesn't have that child. But you know who I thought might? That white woman that Dondre Whitfield has that cute mixed baby with. I wonder if she came back on the strength of her anger, snatched that child, and is going to do some ransom money because she never got her 100 grand from April. That's what I was wondering. We haven't seen her for a while, and she didn't seem like the kind of woman who would get on her Greyhound bus, go back to her southern town, and be quiet. I, I didn't get that sense from her. So, once again, I hope you all let us know next week. Don't make this a season two cliffhanger, please, ABC. Don't do that to me. Okay, I'm gonna just take a, a deep breath um, to talk about Karen. <sighs> Let's talk about it. Karen's messiness at this point is epic. Epic, pervasive, long-lasting. It is a bucket of foolishness so deep that you couldn't crawl your way out of it on a bad day. I mean, come on, Karen. The attorney turns out to be a decent attorney with some decent advice. And in spite of that, Karen isn't beat to follow the advice. The attorney says to her, Karen, you have to have an alibi. Karen goes out and asks, or no, she accepts the offer to use the woman who's prosecuting her son as the alibi. So she says, Sam will be my alibi. Sam shows up at the deposition as a witness for his mother. He is the alibi for his mother's whereabouts on the night of the incident. There goes Karen's alibi, or so we think. The attorney manages to get Karen's partner who the attorney says is in love with Karen. I thought that was very interesting. That had not been brought up all season. It was clear that he had feelings for her and he was interested in spending time with her. Karen's just been so aloof and kind of out of mind with him. I don't think that she's noticed, but the attorney says, let's use your partner as an alibi. You guys were working late. He has a, he's a man with a great reputation. This will be good for you. Karen does not allow it. She says, no, he was there with some other assistant and then proceeds to give her own testimony, testimony that's going to be recorded and presented to a judge to determine if it should go before a grand jury. And she says all of the things that she did do wrong, but the one thing she didn't do was kill Sam's father. That's what she did not do. So. I don't know if that's going to resonate with any court of law, but I do know that once again, Karen has set herself back. Let's talk about that one witness, uh, Gary Dordain. So Dom brought Gary Dordain to the table. First of all, Gary Dordain looks like he hasn't slept since 1998. It's time for a nap, Gary. Gary is testifying and telling why um, you know, like what his relationship with Karen was, why he was interacting with her and so forth. Karen's attorney says, is it possible that you're here because you have feelings for Karen and you have a vendetta against her because she didn't act on those feelings? Gary Dordain did not say what I was hoping he would say. She called me over to her house at night. I didn't call her. She called me. I thought that was obvious. He didn't bring that up, but I just, I thought that was obvious. Anyways, the, the big testimony piece was Sam, which we already touched upon. After the um, deposition, however, we see Sam in the hallway. Now, I was thinking that Sam did the whole I'm my mother's alibi purposely to screw Karen over. According to Sam, he did not. His mother asked, and out of obligation and being her son, he had to and he had no choice. Karen. You expect me to believe that, Sam? How can I believe that? I have no idea what Sam's intentions are. It's clear that he's crazy. It's clear that he is unstable, but it's also clear that Karen is the same way. Maybe they are really two peas in a pod, and maybe Karen will just make it happen with two generations of men within the same family. I gave your father some, he was my tester. Now it's time to make a life with the son. Not, I mean, you know, what works, whatever works. Next week, I'm looking forward 
to finding out who kidnapped April's daughter. I want to know who is Savvy's baby daddy. I want to know if Karen is going to jail. And I also want to know if Joss and BBB are still together. These are the things that I need answers to. And ABC, my expectation is that in the finale, you shall deliver. All right. Make sure to subscribe to this channel, like this video, share this video, follow us on Twitter at Peg and Des, and check out our other videos. Goodbye.